Good morning and welcome to Ion Politics. My name is Samuel Njoroge. We do hope that you had a fantastic Heroes Weekend and you were able to appreciate the various heroes in your life. I think those of you that I got an, an opportunity to interact with, I appreciated you in one way or another. And thank you so much for being a part of this program every Monday to Thursday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. The only way to start your day it is, and my name is is Samuel Njoroge. It's Monday, you know how we do it today. We simply take a look at, at what's happening politically across the board. And uh, this time around, we are focusing a lot on the upcoming election on the 26th. And uh, the president did give an address on this particular matter during Mashuja Day. We shall be getting to listen in on that. But I've got my panel right here. And before I introduce them to begin with today, we shall not be having the company of Dunstan Omari, we'd like to pass our condolences to him. He got bereaved over the weekend, and we do hope that his family and uh, friends and relatives uh, will be at peace during these trying times. Our condolences to you, sir. Uh, but we've got uh, resident analysts, <laughs> and I'd like to begin with Mili Luanga. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Better than you. <laughs> <laughs> you always get me. Yeah. <laughs> You always get me. <laughs> and to my extreme uh, left, we've got the pleasure of introducing an analyst who you'll be seeing on your screen regularly beginning today. His name is James Mamboleo. He joins the Eye on Politics family. We are growing, and we thank God for that and appreciate you for giving us feedback that has made us grow to this level. James Mamboleo, Karibu sana. Nice to see you, sir. How are you doing? I'm good. This is a good political family. Absolutely. You know, you don't have to worry. We are we're good, right, Mili? <laughs> yes, we are yes. good. I love we it, but condolences. My condolences also to me. That's very true. Thank you. And we begin the discussion right now. 22162 is the SMS line, and the hashtag on Twitter is uh, Good Morning Kenya. Before, after you left, Mili, Akombe resigned. Yes. Chiloba went on a three day leave, no, three weeks leave. Yes. I don't know what's your take on that particular issue as we build up the interview uh, further and further. Um, I think that, um, you know, as a person who is keen on issues of governance, mm -hmm. I'm constantly concerned by how the institutions of governance that we have are presenting themselves over this period. And one of the things that has become quite apparent is that uh, there is a problem mm -hmm. with IBC. Uh, it is quite a big problem, and I say so because one of the reasons that Akobe gave for her leaving was that um, she said they, were, they seemed to have been infiltrated by the political class, uh, and they were divided as the board that is supposed to guide policy. Now, I'll tell you that when you seated as a board, and you're each brought there with technical expertise or areas of strength that you're supposed to bring, to an institution, uh, it, it, it's, it looks very bad, it sounds very bad, when it gets to a place where they say that every single decision that they make as a commission has to be made by way of a vote. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say this is because there are certain things that you cannot vote upon. There are certain things when you're managing an electoral process that are very technical, that are a matter of um, common sense, so to speak, so it would, be, um, it, it, it would be most unfortunate when you have to vote on, on everything that you're doing because there are certain things that you need to agree upon. Now that is with Akombe's leaving. With uh, some of the, the issues that have come up after her leaving was also allegations that uh, Chiloba, who is the CEO, was interfering or altering some of the decisions. We have the so-called IBC is now famous for leakages the leaked memo or the leaked uh, information they always leak. you know <laughs> <laughs> from akobe and uh, saying that chiloba overturned some of the decisions they had made and brought uh, brought it in and they they had a vote on it and and this these are all aspects of concern when you have a key process the only process that they didn't get right they got right on august 8th they're getting people out to vote 
they got right the, the kit working so that majority of Kenyans voted by uh, the, their thumbprint being recognized by the system. We did not have too many people having to resort to the manual uh, register. Uh, then the problem that they had was this opaqueness around the transmission of results. And yet again, her memo seems to suggest that there was some opaqueness around what they decided to settle on. So it becomes most unfortunate at this critical time that this entire uh, process that is supposed to be governed by this professional body, that they cannot come and tell us that it is professional. Mm -hmm. Then the last bit of it that was most um, disheartening was the chairman coming out and stating uh, categorically, and he is a lawyer, um, he knows, lawyers are very good with knowing how to use the right words to relay the, the correct information, saying that he cannot guarantee. So leaving the entire country guessing, um, and I, I think you, you recall at that point there was, is it, did he resign and not actually resign or was he stating that he's about to resign? I mean stating that he does not believe that he can deliver a free and fair election with five days to go. So all that uh -huh. culminates into an institution that uh, worries. Is there any problem with IABC, Ambala? Um, there could be a problem with IABC, but not necessarily the problem that NASA is depicting. Mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, the commission ad nauseum has told us that it's ready to conduct an election, at least technically. Um, the IABC has very clear mandate in the constitution and uh, various articles, including articles 138 through to 140 to conduct an election. And we are now conducting an election on 26th. Uh, under the auspices of Article 140 of the Constitution as ordered by the Supreme Court. Now, in my view, we need to become an honest nation. Mm -hmm. I really get surprised at the way um, Akombe is now being, um, Commissioner Akombe is now being quoted as if uh, she was uh, something akin to, to Paul or Timothy in the Bible. It's as if all of a sudden uh, she's acquired the stature of gospel truth. Um, Let's, 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 let's not listen too much to people who have absolutely nothing to tell us about the electoral process and listen to those who actually have something to do, to do with the electoral process. Number one, yes. you must recognize the fact that most of the technical work of the commission is actually undertaken by the secretariat as headed by the CEO. It is him who runs the day-to-day -day activities of the commission and to a very large extent, uh, the remit of how an election is going to look like is of course going to take the face of uh, what the technical aspect of the commission has been doing, mm -hmm. which, is the, which is the secretariat. So you can't place Chiloba or any CEO of any commission too far away from the election. And uh, secondly, um, the policy aspect of the commission is actually oversighted by or undertaken by the board of the commission, which is the commission as headed by the chairman together with the six commissioners. Yep. Um, there are many out there who criticize this electoral process and they say that you know we're not going to have a credible election and uh, the reason we are not going to have a credible election is because the atmosphere is poisoned that kenyans are not speaking in one voice we don't have a meeting of the minds on this issue and we are not going to ever have a meeting on the minds on minds of this issue because this is a political contest you don't expect everybody to agree uh, on how this election is going to be held but there is something important which we have kept saying. Chebukati is not conducting an election because he wishes to or because it is his whim to conduct an election. Mm -hmm. Chebukati is conducting an election because this is the dictate or this is the dictate of the constitution. The Supreme Court did not invent a repeat election. Mm -hmm. It is clearly stipulated under Article 140. So do we have an option whether to conduct an election or not, we do not. And I would really understand if those who are opposed to this election were saying that, you know, technically speaking, this particular election cannot happen in accordance with the Constitution and the law. But they're not saying that. They're saying that, you know, we don't agree with the way this election is being organized, mm -hmm. and therefore we are going to make sure it doesn't happen. Now, that is the distinction they don't give us. They don't say that we are not going to stay at home and wait for those who want to do this election to go and do it. We are going to probably um, cause violence or rebel in such a manner as to make sure that elections are not held in certain places. Mm -hmm. So for me, this is what is key, is a difference 
between boycotting an election and creating riots so that other people who want to do the election don't do it. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference between boycotting an election and interfering Absolutely. with an election. <laughs> Absolutely. I'd like to come to you, Mili. Uh, the law is clear, and the Supreme uh, Court did it? say yeah. that uh, we need to have a repeat election yes. within 60 days. Yes. What exactly would stop this election other than the same law that protects an election? I said it here some, I think now three weeks ago, mm -hmm. no, two weeks ago, that um, right now the situation that Kenya finds itself in cannot be solved by lawyers. And I say that I'm painfully saying so, being one, that saying you need to move lawyers out of this equation. Because when you say, like you do say, and it's often said in Kenya, that the law is clear. The law is crafted in such a manner, and that is the legal language. That's the legal language that people normally use, that it can accommodate as many scenarios as possible. That is just the way the law is crafted. Mm -hmm. That is the, when you do uh, legislative drafting, that is one of the things that you learn must be accommodated. Now, when you do that, then it allows the judiciary sitting and interpreting the law to take in the circumstances because circumstances differ. Uh, when somebody, somebody uh, hits somebody, it could be assault, it could be self-defense, it could, circumstances differ. Now, when I say this, and I come back to the election that we are talking about, there are different components, and I have said it even before. There's one component within the Constitution that is very clear, says you have a president, and you have that president until he hands over to the next president. There are also other aspects of that or other articles within that same Constitution that says this president has powers uh, limited to this extent at this period and this period. So then it leaves a lacuna beyond the 60 days. And the Constitution also says you must have that rerun within the 60 days. Beyond the 60 days, we have a president with full powers. Then you have an incumbency with certain powers of incumbency. Then it is, there's a lacuna beyond that. Now, that is why I'm saying that when you get yourself into a circumstance where you have an election that is supposed to be conducted, not just according to one technical aspect of it, but according to the constitutional principles that guide elections in this country and according to the law. The constitutional principles, and that is why elections, any person who has engaged with the electoral process will tell you that that is why Maraga said that election is a process because it starts with building confidence. It is a way that Wanainchi give power to certain people. So it starts with every single thing that is put in uh, that, that culminates into that final election day. Now, if we have seen systematically since Chebukati was given this task by the Supreme Court yet again, after they say, you failed in August, and he was told, go back and repeat it. And systematically, Chebukati has been leading the institution in making decisions that have left Kenyans guessing and uh, wondering. Even just the fact that he decided to have the two people rerun and not have the entire uh, uh, seven who had pre uh, presented themselves before coming to, to the ballot was a question that was brought up by, by Kenyans. And Judge Mativo's decision was not a surprise to anybody mm -hmm. because that is what Kenyans had been thinking. Now, when I say that looking at all those steps and the person who is supposed to guide the technical aspect of it being Chiloba, constantly, even with Chebukati now saying that even the legal advice I'm given and the lawyers that represented IEBC and the chairman in the, in the court case were people that people have raised questions over. And I have said here in this show that for me, a lawyer is a conduit. It depends on the information your client gives you. So if Chiloba seems to be getting the wrong lawyers or giving the wrong information to the lawyers, they constantly seem to be misadvising the chairman. He is, as uh, my colleague here said, rightly the head of the secretariat he seems not to be getting the best technical expertise that we put so much money into how then can you be sure that there would be a good election merely the, the the question is there anything that would stop this election legitimately so on the 26th legitimately so politically politically it is kenyans who can decide 
that this election should not happen on this date. Chebukati can also come back and tell the nation or go to court and say that this is not an election I can conduct based on the situation that in, I'm uh -huh. in. But remember that according to the Constitution and Chebukati, even in that uh, statement of his, said that technically we are set. He said that in the statement, that technically we are prepared to conduct the election. Okay. But he is not sure or guaranteeing. Let me cross to you, Mambo Leo, two things raised by Mili. The first is that the problem we have, um, according to Mili, will not be solved by lawyers. And number two, the election on the 26th does not appear to... I'm trying to choose my words very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> does not appear like it will kick off as expected. Do you agree with that? I don't, and um, I, I think... My brother Samuel, we have seen this happen many times. Those who support the postponing of this election are trying to go round and round in circles and give explanations upon explanations as to why it shouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. they, they want us to now start undertaking a discussion outside the Constitution. By the way, a Constitution is a social contract. Um, a social contract that Kenyans have made to govern themselves. Outside that social contract, we can only read anarchy. And this is what the Constitution says, that after a, pres a presidential election is annulled, then a repeat fresh presidential election shall be held within 60 days. And we are on the, on the verge of, um, we, we actually almost getting to the outermost mm -hmm. um, side of that 60 day window. So. This is what NASA people will not tell you, especially the, or, or those who support NASA. This is what they don't tell you. They don't tell you that when you have a situation like ours, if you do not, if you do not conduct an election on 26th, then you are going to slide into a realm in which the Constitution no longer tells you what to do. That is what, in common parlance, you've heard them talk or, or say or call um, uh, a constitutional crisis. Mm -hmm. Right now, as my friend Millie says, we are in a political crisis. Now, add that to a constitutional <laughs> crisis in which nobody no longer directs you mm -hmm. on really what you must do. That is definitely going to be anarchy. You know what a constitutional crisis will herald? It will bring administrative paralysis. It will pro probably, most likely, lead to a situation in which government is no longer able to move forward which means almost collapse of government. Mm -hmm. You are headed to nothing else other than civil war. Now, you have a situation in which you are being told several times that you know we have a president. And the constitution is clear that if we don't hold this election, then the president continues being in office until another president is elected and sworn in. Mm -hmm. That is extremely, extremely good. However, look, at least for now, the Constitution tells us how we will hold a const uh, an election. Thereafter, the Constitution will no longer tell us how that election is going to be held. You, you, you have seen uh, a number of, a section of uh, the political divide saying, oh, you know, the president can't do this because right now he's enjoying uh, powers under temporary incumbency under Article 134. And uh, then they quickly say, you know, this is the president. A big, a big chunk of Kenyans in prison, by the way, uh, lost greatly this, this last weekend or on Mashujade because the president could not even pardon them, which happens every year uh, because he is in a situation in which he can no longer exercise his power of mercy. Now, the president that you see in office right now is uh, a lame duck president. He can't exercise most of the powers that make a government run. And that is a situation you want to have and you want to have it and extend it even to a period where the Constitution no longer governs us. Mm -hmm. This is what is likely to happen. After this 60-day uh, window elapses, mm -hmm. believe me, you, there is a political section in this country that will now say, but Mr. Uhuru Kenyatta, your term ended on August 8th. By whose authority or mandate are you the president of this republic? Let us now sit together and agree on how we are going to move the country forward. Mm -hmm. I want to look at Chebukati who has... Uh, the responsibility of running an election. I think Chibukati is not defining the parameters of his mandate extremely well. 
Chebukati does not have a responsibility of reading the political climate in this country. Chebukati needs to ask himself, does the commission as it stands, or as the commission stands now, mm -hmm. can I conduct an election or not? Because whether or not there's going to be a conducive environment politically, that should be left to the political players. And on the one side, we have kept insisting Uhuru Kenyatta's government must put in place a mechanism to guarantee security to all Kenyans. At the same time, the responsible opposition that it should be should make sure that it does not engage in activities which will deny those, those Kenyans who want to vote their right to vote. They should not violently or in any other way uh, which is inconsistent with the Constitution and the law, try to stop those who want to go to the elections to go to the elections. Y you raise a very valid point, Mili. And, uh, I mean, Mambole, and crossing to you, Mili, I'd like us to really assess whether we are ready for the 1st of November as a nation. Should we not have this election on the 26th? Uh, are we ready for the consequences of that? Very good question, Sam. We are not. And this is what I have been saying. Uh, you see, Mamboleo speaks as, I believe, Jubilee, because he says NASA lawyers. I speak as a Kenyan. Uh -huh. uh, and this is what I tell you, that when you look at Jubilee lawyers, they will talk to you and read the Constitution and read the legal situation to suit the circumstances that fit them. When you listen to NASA lawyers, they will also convince you. That is what a good lawyer does. Now, when you sit and think about the circumstance we are in as Kenyans, you are telling us the Constitution says that you're supposed to go into an electoral process that is free and fair, that people participate. It is a situation where Kenyans are choosing the people who are going to give them these powers. Are we in that situation? I don't think that any single person, and that is why more and more Kenyans are coming out to call for peace, to call for prayers, to call for dialogues. There's so many activities going on around the country where everybody's trying to do their two bits because at the end of the day, history will be written. And you want your name to be on the right side of history for whatever reason uh, it will happen. And that is why we saw even women decide to go and uh, uh, print in the papers and put two days of prayers and activities trying to, to, to say their little bit that they can say. So we are not in a political situation that is right. Mm -hmm. We are going to get into that situation when it's going to be worse. Now, if we go into an election on 26th and we have that process and we have the same calls that are still going on with a good part of the country having boycotted, so to speak, or not participated in that process, are you going to say then that that electoral process is going to have brought out lead, a leadership that guides the entire country? That is a good question that we have to ask. Come 26th, are we going to reach a situation where you have brought the two key political sides uh, uh, together in a manner that they would be willing to discuss and think about the greater good of this nation? Or are you going to be putting them in a circumstance where they are still thinking about the power that I have, the power that I want, the power that you have, the power that you should not have. Is that the situation where we'll be? If we are going to be in that situation, and that is where we will be, come the first, then there's definitely no hope mm -hmm. for this country because we are in a situation where the lawyers are not guiding the process, they're reading the law, which is perfectly in order. That is what they are trained to do. They are reading the law to support their agendas, but the truth is that this country has reached, even the National Cohesion and Co uh, Integration Commission came out with a statement the other day and said, where we are as a nation is not right. And for those people who want to be blind to that fact and not say that this is a point where we need to sit as a nation and talk about where we want to be, can we say, can this election happen in two months with Chiloba having uh, gone out in, uh, in three weeks, can we say we, we can have a process that will be fair in two months? I'm just giving an example. Yeah. Is this then the situation? Is this then the point when this country should come together and talk about this and save it? Or continue as we are and see what happens. Uh, kindly help me and probably other Kenyans draw meaning from the words of Raila Odinga that 
he will not boycott the election, but the election will not happen. And in that regard, expect an announcement on the 25th. Uh, deconstruct <laughs> that for me, uh, most often like a two-year-old, like make basics, <laughs> Kabisa. What does that even mean? Um, that is the question, my brother Samuel, that um, Raila Odinga and NAS supporters, including NASA lawyers, and Mili, I, I believe, is one, because anybody who, uh, anyone who supports any proposition that we should not hold an election is actually supporting NASA. They should not tell you that they're impartial. Um, this is the question that NASA lawyers and Raila Odinga have failed to answer. We have asked them the question severally. What does it mean when you say that there is not going to be an election on 26th? Is it that IEBC is not going to roll out a program for us to hold an election? Or is it that IEBC is going to roll out a program for us to hold election and you're going to persuade Kenyans mm -hmm. not to go and vote? Or is it that you have some extraneous measures that you're going to put in place to make sure that IEBC, having rolled out the whole machinery of holding an election, that election notwithstanding doesn't happen. And from the pre preparations you can see going on, you can, you can see that NASA is trying to persuade a certain section of Kenyans not to go to vote. But you can also see that in the way they are speaking, they are also intending to put in place some extraneous mechanism to stop those who want to go to vote, especially in their strongholds, not to go to vote. I have had a discussion with many of them and they're saying uh, in our strongholds, nobody's going to go to vote because after they have voted, when they come back, they would not have a society into which to go. And that is extremely, extremely dangerous. As we speak right now, Samuel, it is only a moot point that a certain section of Kenyans are not going to turn out to vote. I believe that uh, Kenyans are going to turn out and vote, okay? Any time you want to make a statement in a democracy such as ours, then you go out there and exercise your right to vote because bad leaders are elected by good citizens who stay at home like NASA is telling them to so as they don't vote. I know what uh, Raila Odinga and NASA want to achieve in this election of 26th. They want to, they want to choreograph a situation in which someone, someone be looking at it from the outside begins to look at this election as having denied Uhuru Kenyatta and the rest of the candidates, that legitimacy it requires, you know, on the guys that we, all Kenyans did not come out to vote, you know, that some people boycotted the election. And um, the way our system of government works is, you know, if you want to vote, you go and vote. Even when we are in peaceful, orderly environment, just like we were on 8th of August, there are people who chose not to go to vote. So those who want to exercise that right not to vote this time around yet again, let them do it. But let them do it while recognizing a fundamental freedom and a basic right guaranteed by the Constitution to those who might choose to go and vote. However, when you choose not to vote, then you stop yourself from participating in a process in which your voice should have been heard. And then you want to come out here and start engaging us in a discussion that is extra constitutional. I have said several times, Sam, we need to hold a dialogue as this nation because we have many challenges facing us. And every nation needs to always discuss with itself. I believe strongly that Uhuru is a well-meaning man and he should always call upon his brother, elder brother Raila, to have a discussion on how, amongst many other players, to hold a discussion on how to move the country forward. Mm -hmm. However, this dialogue must be held within the four corners of the Constitution. Anytime you want to hold a dialogue outside that Constitution, then it means you want to rewrite the social contract. And the Constitution itself has very clear mechanisms on how it can be rewritten. So, the most cardinal point here today is this, okay? Let NASA stop misleading Kenyans. It is not that if they don't want to hold an election, that election cannot be held. That election will be held. And NASA still has the ability 
to walk to the Supreme Court and file a petition if he thinks that, 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 that election is not held in accordance with the Constitution and the law. The very last thing on Chebukati as chairman is this. Chebukati as chairman knows very well where to find the Supreme Court. If today, for instance, he felt so passionately that, you know, we are in a situation in which we can hold, hold a, a, an election, why should he come out crying to us Kenyans? We have nothing we can do about it. It is him on whom the responsibility to conduct an election is, 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 is vested. Why can't he then move to the Supreme Court and ask the Supreme Court to make this extension? I believe the reason he's not doing so is because he knows the Supreme Court is going to ask him, but why can't you hold an election? Mm -hmm. And he's not going to tell them that, you know, I can't hold an election because NASA says that we can't hold an election. Okay, Lily has been, uh, you know, uh, wanting to respond to that. Wanting to clarify To clarify issue. something. And I think that it is important. Um, I have many different hats that I wear. And I think that, uh, for example, Omari and yourself know that. Mamboleo perhaps does not. I do not want to be classified or bracketed in any place because there are certain things that I do in my life and I sit w uh, in a position where I judge different things and I would not want to have been labeled either NASA or Jubilee. Mm. So I take great exception to that. I speak as a person who is looking at things from a governance perspective. And where there is wrong, there is wrong. Mm. I have said it in this show even before that if it is wrong, if three, four, five wrongs are placed upon one side, you say it. It doesn't matter whether those wrongs belong to NASA or they belong to Jubilee. If they are wrong at that particular side, you say it. And that is the value that I think I would bring to this show. Mm -hmm. If uh, my value would be to come and speak for one side of the political divide, then perhaps it is the wrong show uh, based on what Mambolo is saying. Now, having said that, because I was answering to what uh, the situation is as it presents itself, I would like to clarify one thing. And the thing that I would like to clarify is this, that when you're going into a constitutional, into an electoral mm. process, what the constitution requires is that every Kenyan must be given that opportunity and must be educated on the importance of voting. Yes, it is your option to choose not to exercise that right or not, but you must be given that education. And that is why even before electoral processes, we lay a lot of emphasis on civic education that is why before August 8th, we asked why is IEBC not doing enough civic education? Why are they not going out there to get people to come out and vote? Why are they leaving this out of the bracket? And that was a serious conversation that we had as a nation before the August 8th election. That is how much importance we put to ensuring that people come out to vote. So it then sounds very, very interesting now when you hear people saying, that it is your right, and if you don't want, don't come, and we don't care. If we have people, I mean, even the calls that we have as a nation to go out and register voters, the excitement we have when we hear that the voter register has grown is something that we have constantly lived as this nation, and that is the truth, that is the fact. Now, to hear talks right now that tell us that it doesn't matter whether it is two people who will come out, whether you don't want, what we do is that we have a date and that thing must happen on that date, will we'll lead you to sit back and ask why? What is the value that you're putting in this particular date and ignoring what the process has been and what it has meant to Kenyans? So that's a question that is important for Kenyans to ask themselves as they listen to different people talking and uh, giving their different accounts as to what they need to, to, to take into account come the 26th. Now, my concern is this. Whether people come out to vote on 26th or not, is the, the situation uh, conducive for that process to take place? Is it when many Kenyans are saying that I am scared, when IEBC officials, and we have seen it in the press the entire last week, that the trainings, and we know that there's nothing new, there's nothing good that you can do if you're not trained to do it. The IEBC officials who are meant to conduct this exercise have not been trained. It is an issue that was uh, brought up to say that now to quote 
information that is coming from any IBC official that amounts to citing it as a gospel, um, which is quite offensive, I think, to Christians, uh, as a gospel stated by, by one of the commissioners, is, I think, in bad taste. Because when the person you have given the mandate and the powers and the person who has got the technical or is supposed to have the technical expertise to do this raises a question of concern, including the IEBC officers on the ground saying that we cannot be trained. We know, I know for a fact, I was involved in the process, that the IEBC amended some of their manuals, their training manuals, because they were incorporating some of the concerns that the Supreme Court has raised. Now, if they are not able to train the staff to be able to adhere to that process, then what are we saying? And why are they not able to train that staff, th their staff? It's because of the political situation in which we find ourselves in. So is it not time then for us as Kenyans, who are the sovereign people, to force these people to give us a solution, rather than push us with the talks and uh, trying to put us in boxes and in, 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 in situations where you're forced to, to, to be told whether you must vote and if you don't vote, this is what it means, this is the implication, or do we want a situation where we will vote? Because Kenyans love to vote and they turn out in numbers to vote, where they will vote and they will choose their person and it will be a final tweet. Who wants to go into this and yet go back again to the, because you're being told that then you'll go back to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Go back to the Supreme Court, get yourself into this mess again for yet another three months, really? And that is why I'd like to ask a question. You know, we, we are a nation that has a culture of either legislating or going to court. Yes. One of those two. Uh, the issues, as uh, we seem to agree this morning, will not be answered by lawyers. Mm -hmm. So what is that solution that is going to reconcile political will so that this country moves forward? And by political will, I mean those that want an election and those that do not want an election. Samuel, the biggest problem that we have in this country is uh, dishonesty. Um, this is a political contest. In the fairest of all circumstances, it was still going to produce a winner and a loser. Mm -hmm. We must start learning to understand that an election must be conducted in accordance with the Constitution and the law. And that Constitution provides for a winner and a loser. Unfortunately, this Constitution does not provide anything for the loser. And I think that's where the problem is. But if I take you a bit backwards, um, you will quickly note that in 2010, most of the, most of the talks relating to the constitution that we now have, especially with relation to um, the head of government, mm -hmm. was we need to have either a parliamentary system which produces a prime minister or a presidentialist system. And uh, one of the key political players, and you would get surprised that he's crying wolf now, uh, went to Naivasha, prepared to push for a parliamentary system. Then he was in government. He was a key player in government at the time. And he decided to legislate for himself. You know, he realized that he stood a really good chance of becoming president later. And he thought, I mean, why should I fight the whole idea of a presidentialist system? Let me support it so that when I become president, I can enjoy those monstrous powers that the presidentialist system is going to give. And the other people who will lose, will lose and go outside, outside there in the cold. This is what we need to understand, um, Sam, that uh, some of the issues that some sections of this country are raising in relation to the politics of this country, in, in relation to the economy of this country, are not issues that you can deal with between now or between last week and the 26th. These are issues that are going to take some time in discussing and agreeing about as a nation. And so the calls for dialogue before 26th is basically a red herring. You have a section of the political divide which procures an artificial crisis so as to force certain discussions which are extra constitutional and you are calling on the other side to agree to those talks. This is what will, uh, this is what will happen. Um, you are now in a, a sticky situation or we are in a sticky situation as a nation. Why? Because as uh, my good friend Millie says, you know, we cannot even train IEBC officials in some places. 
But look at the reason why we cannot train those of IEBC officials. Is it because the IEBC is unable to train them? It is because someone, together with his system, has deliberately chosen to create a hostile environment in those situations or in those places so that IEBC officials cannot be trained. Mm -hmm. What they are doing is actually illegal, all right? So we cannot resort to illegal um, means to stop legal processes and then claim that, you know, we are in a crisis. I think I read the president as meaning extremely well for this country. He's saying, look, we have done many things before which a lot of us probably do not like. We are uh, not perfect, but we are much better off placing ourselves ourselves in the process of the constitution and the law rather than going outside it because once you agree to go outside that constitution, even for once, then you are in a place in which nobody gives you any regulation on how to move forward. Let us be clear on one important aspect, okay? Once 26th comes and goes and there is no election in this country, once that 60 day window lapses, and there is no, no, no election that has been held in Kenya, then the Constitution does not tell you what will happen. There are those who even argue that, you know, the Supreme Court can extend the 60-day period. The Supreme Court does not exist out there in space. The it, it, it exists inside the Constitution. Mm -hmm. It might as well say, well, you Kenyans have done what you needed to do. We do not know how to help you because we told you hold the election in accordance with the Constitution, you have failed to do so. Why would you run to us? Why would we go outside the Constitution so that we place ourselves in a crisis so that we go to the Supreme Court to, to get the Supreme Court to deal with that so, crisis? So, so in other words, you're saying that should this not happen within 60 days, one, we cannot run back to the Supreme Court because it may give us nothing. So it creates a situation whereby the next phase is determined by whoever is defining it. Ab the, absolutely. The, the next phase I is going to be determined by whoever chooses to determine it. However and they choose however to. However they choose to. To and, what end? And you are better off. Let uh -huh. me tell you, Samuel, and this is, I think, my most important message to Kenyans. A lot of Kenyans are romanticizing with the idea of rebellion and violence because they probably do not know exactly what it means, Okay. We are, we are now complaining, you know, this government is not good. Um, go, look at what happened to Syria, okay? Some forces thought uh, the Assad regime was uh, dictatorial, it was bad and terrible, and look at what is happening there. They went to, uh, Americans went to, um, went to uh, Iraq. They deposed Saddam Hussein, they killed him. Look at that country now. Look at Libya, and so on and so forth. Let us have a government that we can ask to bring us together and we have a discussion as opposed to having absolutely no governance structure, in which case, therefore, there will be no country to discuss about. No point that of account. Really, absolutely. And I think, mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, one of the things that I hear, because Kenyans, the problem we have with a lot of Kenyans is they don't listen. They don't listen to the conversations that are out there. They don't listen to what is going on. And what I hear out there is that every Kenyan believes that there is a problem, agrees that there is a problem, believes that there's need to have that discussion, does not want to talk outside their thoughts. And I'm saying this to mean what? For example, when you listen to Jubilee, they believe that should they still have some form of power, uh, however you describe it or however it is obtained, come the 26th, then there will be possibility of talk. You listen to NASA, and it is that outside this particular scenario, let us find a position where we can sit and talk. Now, as Mamboleo has rightly said, the judiciary, going back to the judiciary, the judiciary's work is to interpret the laws and the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And the Constitution has already given a timeline. The judiciary cannot create extra timelines for people. That is outside the question. That is why the, the solution must be political. It has to be political and it has to be fostered by the will of Kenyans to ensure that the two key sides of the divide, including the other smaller sides, uh, whichever side they may want to fall on, will be able to come to the table and talk about this. 
leading or ruling or governing by fear has never worked. And that is why participation is a key value and principle within our constitution, both under chapter 10 and under article 10, uh, under article 10 and chapter 6, where we talk about the issue of values yeah? and saying that participation, respect, equality, and bringing everybody to the, to the table are some of the things that we hold key as Kenyans in issues of governance. If you believe that it is going to be possible, and I've seen now Kenyans doing, it's all over the social media, the picture of the president of Congo arriving and with the military and the, the, the way he's surrounded and he can hardly breathe for the number of people supporting him. If you believe that the best way to, um, uh, to govern is by terror and fear and holding people to account, then that's, that's, that's uh, an option that somebody is open to. But how long? How long will that hold? You know, th those are very critical questions we're raising right now. And uh, we got to bring this particular show to a close this morning. Yeah. James Mombolel, thank you for coming. Mili Longa, always a pleasure. Mm -hmm. But we need to think about a few things. Number one, Chabukati Sa, what exactly are you lacking to conduct this election? And if you believe there is a problem, and I'm addressing Kenyans right now, if we just do a random check and ask Kenyans what is the problem, would you give me a legitimate answer or would you give me a political answer? <laughs> Number three, let's get serious. Are we ready for the conversation come 1st of November? Because for other things, corporate Kenya may not be polite. Two quarters without hitting their margins, we all know what's going to happen. Think about that. Family Check is up next with Safina Cheng, but not before people like us. My name is Samuel Njoroge. God bless you all.